there, this is Miss History coming to you with another Woman of History tidbit here on Perry This. This time we will be focusing on Empress Wu Zetian. Wu Zetian was born in Washi County, Shanxi Province, in 624 CE to a wealthy family. She was the daughter of Wu Shihou, who was a chancellor of the Tang Dynasty. Unlike most girls in China at this time, Wu was encouraged by her father to read and write and develop the intellectual skills which were traditionally reserved for males. She also was taught to play music, write poetry, and to speak well in public. Wu was a beautiful young lady and was selected by the Emperor Taizong to be one of his concubines when she was only about 13 years old. Although the function of the concubine in China was almost always associated with sex, a woman in this position could have a number of non-sexual responsibilities, from daily tasks like taking care of the laundry to more specialized skills like conversation, poetry reading, and playing music. She began her life at court taking care of the royal laundry. One day she dared to speak to the emperor when they were alone and talked about Chinese history. Taizong was surprised that his latest concubine could read and write. He became fascinated by her beauty and wit in conversation. Taizong was so impressed by her intellectual abilities, he took her out of the laundry duty and made her his personal secretary. In her new position, she was constantly involved in affairs of state at the highest level. She must have performed her duties well because Wu became a favorite of Taizong. After a while, once Emperor Taizong died, his son Gaozong replaced him as emperor. Wu Zetian and Taizong's other concubines were required to be sent to a Buddhist convent to become nuns. This was a common practice after the death of the emperor. The emperor's concubines could not be passed on to be used by any other, but were forced to end their time at court and start a new life of chastity in a religious order. Wu was brought back to the palace to be the first of Emperor Gaozong's concubines, even though he had others, and a wife as well. Wu was given the privileged position of first concubine, even though by law she should have been left at the temple as a nun. Gaozong's wife, Lady Wang, and his former first concubine, Lady Xiao, were jealous of each other, but even more envious of the attention Gao Zong paid to Wu. According to Wu's own account, they conspired against her, but according to other historians, Wu started and finished the problems she had with them. Lady Wang had no children and Lady Xiao had a son and two daughters. In 652 CE, Wu gave birth to a son, Li Huang and in 653 CE had another son, Li Xian. Neither of the boys was a threat to Lady Huang or Lady Xiao, because Gao Zong had already chosen a successor. His chancellor, Liu Shi, was Lady Wang's uncle. Gao Zhe appointed Liu Shi's son, Li Zhang, as heir. Still, this did not mean the women were not jealous of the favor the emperor showed Wu, now that she had given birth to two sons in a row. In 654 CE, Wu had a daughter who soon died after the birth. The baby was strangled in her crib, and Wu claimed that Lady Wang had killed her because she was jealous. Wang was the last person seen in the room and had no alibi. Wu also accused Lady Wang and her mother of practicing witchcraft and implicated Lady Xiao. Soon after, Lady Wang was found guilty of all the charges, and so were the others. Gao Zhang then divorced his wife barred her mother from the palace, and exiled Lady Xiao. Lady Wang's uncle, the Chancellor Liu Shi, was removed from his post, which meant his son was cut off as Gao Zong's heir. After all of that, Lady Wu was raised to the position of first wife of Gao Zong, an empress of China. She was also assured that her sons would rule the country after the death of her husband. Empress Wu played the role of the shy, respectable emperor's wife well in public, but behind the scenes tells a different story. She was the actual power behind the throne. She carefully eliminated any potential enemies from the court and had Lady Wang and Lady Xiao killed after they had gone into exile. Historians claim that Wu ordered Lady Wang and Lady Xiao murdered in a terrible way. She had their hands and their feet cut off and then they were thrown into a vat of wine to drown. Although Wu claims that Lady Wang murdered her daughter, later Chinese historians all agreed that Lady Wu had killed her own child to frame Lady Wang.
Any historian who has written on Lady Wu has followed the story set down by the later Chinese historians without question, but these historians had their own agenda which did not include praising a woman who presumed to rule like a man. Most historians always portray Wu as ruthless, conniving, scheming, and bloodthirsty, and she may have been all of those things. She may have even murdered her daughter to gain the throne but any of these claims should only be accepted after considering their source. A woman in the most powerful position in government threatened the traditional patriarchy, and the court counselors, ministers, and historians claimed Wu had upset the balance of nature by assuming the power which belonged to a man. Shortly after she took the throne, there was an earthquake, which was interpreted as a bad omen. Omens were extremely important to people of ancient China, and played a significant role in Tong politics. A mountain appeared following the earthquake. This was also interpreted as nature itself revolting against Wu's reign. Wu viewed the situation differently. She claimed the mountain was a good omen, which reflected the Buddhist mountain of paradise, Semeru. She had the mountain named Mount Felicity, and claimed it had risen to honor her and her reign. Even though many at court congratulated her on being favored by the gods, Many others did not. Beginning in 660 CE, Wu was effectively the Emperor of China. She did not hold the title, but she was the power behind the office and took care of the imperial business even when pregnant in 665 CE with her daughter, Taiping. For an example of her clout in 666 CE, when she led a group of women to Mount Tai, an ancient ceremonial center, where they conducted rituals which traditionally were performed only by men. Having been raised by her father to believe that she was equal to men, Wu saw no reason why women couldn't carry out the same practices and hold the same positions as men could. Needless to say, she did not ask any man's permission to lead those women to Mount Tai. She felt she knew what was best and did it. She had also organized military campaigns against Korea in 668 CE, which were so effective that they reduced Korea to the status of a vassal state. Emperor Gotsong had nothing to do with either of these events, although his name would have been attached to the campaigns against Korea. Gotsong had caught a disease which affected his eyes and needed to have reports read to him. Wu either read him whatever she felt like and then made her own decisions, or read him the real reports and then still acted on her own. In 674 CE, Gotsong took the title Tian Hong, Emperor of Heaven and Wu changed her own to Tianhou, Empress of Heaven. They ruled as divine monarchs until Gaozong's death in 683 CE. Wu placed her first son on the throne, who took the royal title, Zhongzong. He refused to cooperate while with his mother and wife, Lady Wei. Lady Wei had her father appoint a chief minister to her husband and tried to push through other measures favoring her family. Wu could no longer tolerate her daughter-in-law's antics and disrespect and her son's refusal to discipline her and obey Wu's dictates. She had him charged with treason and banished along with his wife. She replaced Zhou Zong with her second son, who became Emperor Ru Zong. She kept Ru Zong under a kind of a house arrest, confining him to the inner palace. Ru Zong was also a disappointment to her, so she forced him to abdicate in 690 CE and proclaimed herself Emperor Zetian, ruler of China the first and only woman to sit on the dragon throne and reign in her own name and by her own authority. Her last name, Wu, is associated with the words for weapon and military force, and she chose the name Zetian, which means ruler of heavens. She wanted to make it clear that a new kind of ruler had taken the throne of China and a new order had arrived. The first thing she did was change the name of the state from Tong to Zhou. It was customary when a dynasty changed to reset history. Each dynasty was considered a new beginning, and when Wu changed the name from Tong to Zhou, she was following this tradition, but went farther to make it clear that she was the beginning of a completely new era by calling her reign Tian Zhou, granted by heaven. As early as 660 CE, Wu had organized a secret police force and spies in the court and throughout the country. She established a policy so that informants could be paid to travel by public transportation to report to the court. This spy system served her well in giving her early warning of any plots in the making and enabled her to take care of the threats to her reign before they became actual problems. 
Empress Wu accomplished many things during her reign, including creating new characters for the Chinese writing system, improve the public education system, reform the Department of Agriculture and the system of taxation, and reform the military by mandating military exams for the commanders to show competency. And that's only a few. She was also to reopen the Silk Road, which had been closed because of the plague in 682 CE, and later raids by the nomads. Wu also took back lands which had been invaded by the Goturks under the reign of Taizong and distributed them so that they were not all held by the aristocrats. In 697 CE, Wu's hold on power began to slip when she became more paranoid and began spending more time with her young lovers than ruling China. Her paranoia resulted in a purge of her administration. Anyone she suspected of disloyalty, for any reason, was banished or executed. The efficiency of her court declined as she spent more and more time with the Zhang brothers and became addicted to different kinds of aphrodisiacs. In 704 CE, court officials could no longer tolerate Wu's behavior and had the Zhang brothers murdered. Wu was forced to abdicate in favor of her exiled son, Zhang Zhang, and his wife Wei. She was in very poor health anyways by this time and died a year later. Empress Wu was buried in a tomb in Qian County in Shanxi Province, alongside Gaoqiang. A huge stele was erected outside the tomb, as was customary, which later historians were supposed to inscribe with Empress Wu's great deeds, but the marker remains blank. So I don't know if she was a good person or a bad person. Maybe a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> I'm Miss History signing off. So